Peggy 16. created this engine, you know, specifically for Battlefield 3 uh, originally, and then, you know, we came to the conclusion that other people actually have use for this, and I think it's pretty amazing that, you know, you guys are making a racing game out of our engine. It is, definitely, because, uh, you know, without the engine, we, uh, we wouldn't have been able to deliver our concept and, and using the key technologies that the engine provides. Battlefield 3 is the true success of Battlefield 2, we need to make everything bigger and better basically. So we need to develop new technology for doing that. So one of those things is streaming uh, the content into the maps. With that we can build the biggest map we've we ever done before. And I think that that's something that you also benefit a lot from, right? Definitely. For Need for Speed, um, the concept that we went with, the coast to coast race, really couldn't have been built without scale. In order to pull off what we need to do, we basically doubled the length of our tracks. We quadrupled the number of textures, you know, wow. four times the number of objects. So the scale for us just wasn't achievable on our old engine. And it's the terrain system that you guys developed, obviously, that allows us to basically have our vistas that we have. You know, when you drive down the highways, you can see for miles out in the desert, you can see for miles out in the mountains, and it really sells that sense of journey. I mean, the destruction enables us now to do things that no one else is able to do, really. Like, you know, just seeing other players from other, playing other shooters coming into Battlefield, where, you know, when I play Battlefield now, it's natural for me to just go through the walls. So if I'm driving a tank and there's someone hiding behind the wall or a sniper somewhere far away, I just take out the whole building or, you know, the wall that he's hiding behind. While, like, you say people that, that are not used to playing Battlefield and they, they're trying to run around the walls all the time, and I'm just like, laughing at them, what, what they're doing. It's kind of cool to see how, how that also is implemented in, in Need for Speed. Yeah, for sure. In Need for Speed, it, it basically allowed us to create the epic journey we wanted to create for Jack as he's on this coast-to-coast -coast race. You know, car racing has often been a very sterile environment, you know, doing laps around a, a circuit. And uh, as a genre, I don't think we've actually made the advancements that you guys have made yet. So for us, it was all about harnessing that power to create objects you smash through on shortcuts, um, or whether you're driving down Chicago and you're being chased by a helicopter and cars are blowing up and you're, you're seeing pillars explode all along the drive. It really has allowed us to set the bar a little bit higher as a racing game across the board. We wrote the whole rendering engine from scratch, and that enables us to have uh, more light sources to make it more cinematic. We can do both indoor and outdoor lighting, so you see actually real shadows going around the game. And just with the destruction, we have all these explosions and the smoke coming out. Uh, we need, needed the particles and the effects to look really good as well, like really cinematic. And obviously Frostbite rendering was very key for us uh, in Need for Speed to be able to sell the epic nature of the journey from the west coast to the east coast. So, you know, you have the beautiful vistas of Yosemite, you have the dust storms that you go through, you have the mountain passes and the billowing clouds of, of fog and snow. And, and that grand scale actually boils down to some of the smaller pieces that I think the players will pick up on, which is, you know, the tire spray going through a, a thunderstorm in, in the plains and picking up the lighting off that. Um, Chicago, there's uh, you know blasting pillars and dust and and picking up the lights of, from the tail lights and the headlights of the car and the dynamic lighting as you go into New York at sunset and it's just an amazing vista of uh, visual environment from start to finish that you know it really sells the journey the player goes on in this race. When developing Frostbite 2, we needed to push the level of immersion of the game. One of the key elements for immersion is obviously sound. Everything has to be done dynamically, and that's what our engine actually does with the audio. So you can actually distinguish what gun it, the, the sound comes from, what distance, what direction it's coming from. Building from the bigger beats of the, the journey, you know, whether it be a thunderstorm or an avalanche, down to you know, the little rock pebble sounds as you drive over a shortcut, or the whine of the engine as you shift gears. What it's allowed us to do is basically build more and more layers of sound. That the inputs are coming from the right places and that as you pass by a given sound or explosion or hear something in the distance that it feels right and it feels balanced and, and you get the perception and that everything's working as a, as a package. So we looked 
at, at this sports game actually, Look, looking at FIFA and Madden and what they've done, like the players when they're running around, you know, kicking the ball, it looks so realistic. And imagine that we, we took that animation system and, and brought that into a shooter game. So when the soldiers are running around, gunning each other, it looks so fluid, so realistic. And then for us, you know, we start the game and it's a very tense uh, cinematic moment and Frostbite basically has allowed us to create that very human aspect, which is one of our key tenets for the game. And really bring the emotion out in Jack as, he's, as he opens the game up. And beyond that, I mean, as, as we've described some of the moments you go through over the course, a lot of them are very animated moments. And so the animation engine of Frostbite has allowed us to pull off some of the, these moments and these, these epic beats in the part of the journey that, that we wouldn't have been otherwise able to pull off. I think it's great that we've made this engine and then be able to share it with other teams and just like, focus on actually making the game and not, and not the technology. And just that we actually got stuff back from you guys. We have roads and they built a, a tool for, for building roads. We actually could bring that tool back to Battlefield so we could build roads faster, for example. That, I think that, that's pretty cool. And then for us, we knew the game we wanted to make. We looked at a number of different options and Frostbite 2 was the one that allowed us to develop the concept and, and build the game that we wanted to do. You know, what we've delivered this year we're very proud of, um, but we see even greater things in the future, you know. The, the run is just the start of what we think we can do with Frostbite.